What's up, guys? Uh, just want to talk to you today. I, I didn't post a video yesterday, and um, I normally try to post, you know, three or four a day, and um, I was tired. <laughs> uh, it's the first time in a long time I've been this tired, uh, and it got me thinking. Uh, I kind of lost some of my my joy and my my zeal. Uh, specifically as it relates to you for Madden um, and it and I feel like we lose that sometimes um, you know, sometimes something you want most is just to be able to sit down and play a you know play a mutt game and enjoy it and uh, and uh, you know maybe go into practice mode and, and just <laughs> make your own you know make something and not have to worry about if it if it beats every defense or every what <coughs> whatever and and that was where I was at yesterday. Um, you know, I'd been kind of under the weather sick, and I um, don't know. No, I just got to thinking about the game and got to thinking about, uh, you know, the mentality that I try to bring to the game and the, all of the intricacies. And, and I got to thinking about, like, the best players, of course. And uh, upon thinking about the, you know, the kind of the top level competition. One of the things that you know really you know really got to me was that there's no, there's nothing special. Um, what you're gonna see is, uh, and I'll just show you here. Uh, we're in practice mode. I wanted to talk today about labbing more more specifically, but we'll show you this. And I just want to uh, kind of show this a little bit, but. Um, I mean, you have your you, you have your team every year that is kind of the the go-to team. The last couple of years, it's been to Seattle. Uh, some people like Pittsburgh. I don't know. Some people like I like Dallas, but you know they're not the best overall team. Um, but we'll just show you Seattle here. Um, the playbook that a lot of people probably like to use. I like New England personally, so I'm going to show you New England. But um, I don't know if that's the, I don't know I don't really know what everyone likes. I mean I know some people like the four three under. Uh, I know that's in New England and New England just has a really good you know playbook system and they really normally do every year. So we'll show you New England on both sides here just to kind of talk a little bit about this. Um, and then you know I, the purpose of this video is gonna we're gonna show you how to lab here towards the end. And so if you'll just stick around and let me ramp for a little bit, I'll give you something you can use. But um, I think this is a I think this is a video that it may not get a lot of views. People may not really like it, but I, I really think that it's something that really is impactful. Uh, and so I hope that you I hope that you listen. I hope that you follow my train of thought and and you know not listen as if I'm talking down to you, but just listen as I'm a, as if I'm a player just playing alongside of you and and just you know kind of working through some of this stuff because I think this is issues especially I don't know if, you know you don't know how you guys are, but. I know it's something I struggle with, and um, we like Arizona this year offensively. Um, but you know, just for the purpose of this video, we're just gonna pick a random playbook. Um, and I know a lot of guys, and, and you kind of go to line, and one of the things I've noticed, you know, something that's old school. Houston is an old school playbook. It's something from Madden 12, and um, those years where people are really liking this. And so I just want to use it just to kind of bring back some of the past history and kind of think about this a little bit, but while this is loading up, I just want to kind of talk for a second. Um, you know, you notice online, and I don't know if you guys have paid any attention to this, but a lot of the tip givers are kind of fading back. Um, Madden Mastermind is not what it used to be. Madden Tips isn't even what it used to be, and those were my guys. I mean, I love them. love their content. Um, Zan's starting to come up and make more tips, and do more things, which is great. Love it. Love seeing new guys come to the come to the uh, fold. And I mean, Zan's really been a lot longer than I have. Um, Gamers Lab is starting to fade away. Madden Daily's on the up and come, but they're they've been kind of in and out last two years, and and I kind of understand why. Um, it's a hard it's a hard game to really. Madden 16 this year. I mean, it's a it's fun. I love it. I love playing, but sometimes it's hard to to do this, you know. Uh, and and I never really really thought of it like that until yesterday when I just was burnt out and not just with Madden, but you know overall. But I got to thinking about how it applies to Madden, and so I just want to show you. 
Um, I want to try to make the point today that it does not matter what playbook you use. And I try to make this point in the Scheme of the Week videos, and I don't know that if it comes across as bluntly, but that it doesn't matter what you do. Um, you know, it doesn't matter what playbook you use. It doesn't matter what formation you run. It doesn't matter what team you use. I mean, none of that. I mean, those have an impact, but you know what really matters is execution. I mean, that's the bottom line. It comes down to execution. Um, so today, I just want to show you some of the stuff. Um, I know a lot of people like four three hundred. I don't even know the play they use, honestly. I don't know. I think it's the safety blitz, um, and it's like a B gap, but. We're not going to worry about that today. I just want to show. We'll use um, we'll use the uh, just a basic scheme. So I think something from the three four odd. Was it like a safety blitz? I don't know if it's in here. Hang on, I can't remember. Maybe no. I think it was the under. Yeah, it was probably the under with the safety blitz. So let's look at this. So free safety slant three. So this is the and what you do is you put your fast guys in here so so what I like to do is I'll take these guys and make them you know I like to kind of overload since we're gonna primarily be blitzing from the right we want to put as much speed to that side of the look can so we'll do it like this and um, and I'm gonna just lab this up for you and I'm gonna show you how to lab we're gonna take a look at a popular play but we're gonna show how we arrived at that point and so what most people will do and we're gonna show one for offense and defense and it'll be a little longer but you know I don't really care okay so the first thing you want to do when labbing to play is just run it and take a sack so we snap the ball I'm gonna go back drop back and we'll just take a sack now next step is to go into your instant replay so you're gonna lo load up instant replay here so just go in there and what you want to do is you want to try to look, you want to flip the camera around. Obviously, you want to hide this toggle screen. What I like to do is is to not put it on the ball, but to put it on one of the linemen. So for here, for this example, since we're sending it from the right side, we're gonna put the toggle on the right guard. Okay. Now what we want to do here is we're trying to figure out how to manipulate the lineman to let him come in. Okay. So what you see here is that. This guard is gonna guard is paying. You know, you see that slip that the that the no, that the center gets. So that's interesting uh, to me because what that means is that it's a double team on the tackle for a moment. So we're gonna try to really and you see how this guard slides over. So that's what we're looking at. And then also this outside linebacker when he comes in, you see that right there. How he's gonna take the tackle. So if we can really just get this left guard occupied, 65 here. Uh, we could be in we can be in business and really the left side linemen don't matter because they're normally not going to slide over so now let's see if we can't manipulate that a little bit so one of the things we can do and another thing you want to do is you want to oops we got the wrong controller loaded up but another thing you want to do uh, is you want to base line and you see this is going to change the format here now from there you see these slip angles that we've got here. What I'm going to try to do is maybe just re-blitz Avril straight, straight down. And then see if that works. And so here you see it doesn't work. So that means we'll now need to try something else. Okay, so we'll just keep trying things. You just, you want to change only one thing at a time. So, so, um, so now, whoops. Um, so now we're going to base a line. And now we're going to try to re-blitz Bruce Irvin straight down to maybe get a little wider angle. And now you see, I mean, I still have the same problem, so we're going to need to change something else. Maybe we'll need to re-blitz both of them. So now we're going to try to re-blitz Irvin and Averill. So we re-blitz those both guys straight down. And we're still having the same issue. Now, one of the common themes in blitzing this year is to crash your line to the opposite side of your blitz. So let's try to do that. We're going to crash our line to the right. And we'll see how that works. And we still have that same same problem. So now what I'm you know more inclined to do is maybe it's the front, maybe it's the alignment of our players. So we like to mess with alignment, so we'll try to maybe spreading our linebackers. So we spread the linebackers out a little bit. Sometimes that changes the impact, and you see here it doesn't. And you just keep trying different things. Um, you know we could spend hours on all of the things you can try, but 
you know, now we'll try to show blitz. When we show blitz, you see that, um, uh, let me see here, you see that's going to bring the safety down uh, in the, right in this angle. Um, and then also, norm, you know, normally we can, you know, maybe spread our line and try a different alignment there. So we're going to try all this and see if, that's, see if this works. And you see we're still having just a little bit of problems. Um, and then sometimes this year what I find is that, it, it, you know, it may be beneficial to to move um, your your guys out wider. So maybe take this linebacker and re-blitz him straight down. Change his blitz angle. Um, all of these things are things you can try. And you see that it's just going to, you're going to continue to work through this process. Um and it is a process. It's a process that takes hours, and um, sometimes you get burnout on it, as I did the other day. Uh, but eventually, what you'll find, um, I can't remember the setup. I wrote it down, but I can't remember what it was. But basically, let's see if this works. No. I can't remember what it was. I'll try to show something from... Let me show you something from what I know. Uh, so the 335 odd, uh, we'll use that for this purpose. I wanted to see if I could just use a popular formation, but I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming the 335 odd probably is a popular formation. But the play that we'll use today is... Um, if I can find it. And normally on offense, you want to come out in a play with everybody passing. Or everybody on a route. Um, but the Sam Mike 3 press, this is a popular play that I feel like, you know, I like, and I think it's really good. So, what we do is we're going, you know, we, we base a line, or we run it once and we see, okay, we've got, you know, kind of got some pressure, but nothing really crazy to drive home about. So, you know, we'll try all of this stuff. And eventually we'll come up with something like this where we get a three-man pressure off that right edge as you see the loop works um, and that's what you look for now what I want to know what I want to eat at here is this we have this pressure right here you know in which I would contend is some of the best I mean some of the best pressure you're gonna be able to get this year I mean you're sending three people from the right and you're getting a guy to come free off the edge of the quarterback I mean, I feel like that's, you know, that's pretty solid. Um, and then obviously we have the left side. And which the same thing can occur. I don't know if it will work here because we changed the blitz angle. But we'll just see. And you see you get that nice gap heat. Okay. So that's the basic concept this year. Um. In my opinion, it's really good. Um, it's it's three off, and this is I mean, if you want to you want to get the setup for that, you could check the description below. I've got e guides on sale. Uh, they're pretty cheap, in my opinion. Um, they don't cost that much, and uh, so you could check that out if you want. Um, no pressure, but just wanted to let you know that's an option. Um, so that's the basic concept, right? That's the basic pressure. We're going to be able to get pressure off the left, and here we'll show you the real pressure off the left and I mean that was a pretty solid example right there what we showed but I just want to show you this um, just just to see something here but you know we have our right he edge set up we have our left edge set up so now we send it you know send it here and we're able to get that you see what I'm saying so we have those two setups we also have double setup we also have all of those things so now what we do is we go as we should be able to go play and be fine um, but what I find myself doing and this is part of the you know wanting to be the best mentality is I want to know everything about the game and I want to know how every formation works I want to be able to get a you know get a blitz out of every play and and all this stuff and what I preach in the guide is something that I really need to start working out in my own is sometimes it's really not about what you know you know I mean really let me just show you an example. So one of the more popular plays in Madden history is the cross wheels. We run nickel 35 odd against this, come out in our base play. Okay? And what you're gonna note is that against our pressure, which you just saw, I mean we sent 
pretty heavy pressure. Sometimes for some reason the linebackers don't want to go in their gaps. So I think it's normally just practice mode. So we'll just pinch them. Normally if you pinch your linebackers, they'll go right in their gaps. But anyway, you know, pretty solid pressure here. But watch what we can do offensively. Quick flat pass, five yards. You know, those five yards that, and it's easy, you know. And then, say for example, we want to get aggressive defensively. We want to. And I have a point here, so please bear with me. So say we want to stop that, but still send that pressure. So now we stop the wheel, but we leave that lot of streak open. You see how it is a... Um, no matter what you do, you're always going to have something open. Um, no matter what you do. You know, even if... You know, especially to sim pressure. But what I'm trying to get at is this. Game is not about stopping everything your opponent's going to do. It's just not. That's not what defense is. Defense is simply trying to keep your opponent out of the end zone. That's all it is. And offense is trying to get in the end zone. Now we do it through a variety of ways. One of them is this pressure. This is only one play in a system. So now, watch what I do now. And this is something I have to really consciously work towards. But now, I'm only going to send two guys at the quarterback. Drop everybody else out in coverage. What I like to do is this, too. Just for... Just for... Just want to make this complete with what I like to do. You see this. This is the coverage. Okay? Drop that there. And as you see, we still get that pressure out of the... Which I really, you know, pretty good. But, um... The point is this. Don't make a game... Don't make it more than it is. Um, we know how to be successful in this game. There's millions of ways to beat zone. There's millions of ways to beat man. There's millions of ways to blitz. There's millions of ways to do all of those things. What I want to get at is have your own. Um, I want to show you some offense too. Um, so for example, cover two man popular defense in this year's game. One way to beat it is this. We place the wide receiver on a hitch route and we smart route it. That's one of the very simple ways to beat, man. It's been around since the hitch route's been invented. It's an unbumpable. What you're going to do is just hold, have a low pass lead when he turns around and you're going to be able to beat man for 10 yards at a time. But what when the defense calls cover two? So the defense calls cover two. We're going to run the same play. Same pass lead to hit him, everything. See, we throw it, and we got lucky there, but the point is there's people in the area to stop that. So now we need something that will beat the cover, too. Well, something that does that is the all curl. So the all curl... All curl is pretty simple. You're just going to put Beasley on a hitch two. That's all you're going to do. What you'll see is he'll beat that cover two for you. You see that? So there it is. And the point of me saying this is these are hot routes. Nothing unique. Nothing special to this play. You know, they're just hot routes. And then we can, you know, throw in some of that stuff. But the point is it doesn't matter what you doesn't really matter what play you call. You can beat you can win a game solely with hot routes. You really can. You, you really and truly can do that. Um, it's all about execution. It's all about execution. It's all about being able 
to execute your plays. And so that's what I'm going to start talking about. Um, I'm going to start talking more in that realm. I'm going to give you plays that are going to make you successful. One thing that you want to note, when you go into offense to lab, what you want to do is you want to come out in a cover four drop. Then you want to come out on whatever play you want to do. So say we're going to lab from this wing trips, and we want to say, okay, we want to learn how to use the play PA slot cross. So we're going to run it against whatever coverage we want to do. Primarily what I like to do is start to run against man first and foremost to see how many routes on mine beat man-to-man -man coverage. just standard. So we'll just run the play, and we'll take a sack. So sit back, take a sack. Same kind of process as defense. Now what we'll do is go into instant replay and figure out what every route on the field does. So we notice that this route on the left looks like it can beat man to the outside. Okay, it looks like it's pretty good at beating man to the outside. Another thing we notice is that it cuts up field af immediately after it immediately after it does that. Um, the next thing we notice is that this blue route is a block and release pattern that releases the flat. Normally will beat man as you see here. He beats his man and there's nobody out there, especially in man coverage. It's something interesting. Um, and then we look at this next route to Williams. You see this crossing pattern does a nice job uh, at beating man. Okay. Um, and then lastly with Dez, you see this deep in route. It is a um, it's, it is pressed at the line of scrimmage, which is another thing we like to look for. Is the route pressed or is it not? Those are all things we look for. So now we make some adjustments. So we say, okay, we, we realize that we have a couple man beaters on this play. Now the important thing to do is to throw these routes. So what I like to do is just drop back and just kind of work these routes and see, okay, so I have to, you know, I can't just lob that route up. Um, you see it's going to be a pick. So then the next thing may be to try to throw the user catch. So we notice that it cuts up field immediately upon release, so maybe throw a high pass lead, and we had a little bit of pressure there because Witten's route released. Um, but let's just show this. You see how it can see how that can work. So there's all sorts of things uh, along these lines, but. All what I'm trying to say is this. When you're working on offenses, don't get so caught up in ha you know, in being able to, you see there, the aggressive catch. And so Cole Beasley may not be the person you want there. But in the process, we work all these things out. But don't be so caught up in having a play that every route beats man. Because we can do that. We can put Des Bryant on a, on a comeback pattern. And what you'll see is that every single route on this play will beat man-to-man -man coverage. And I'll just use Des Bryant's route as an example. It beats man. Very simple. But, what happens when they don't run man? What happens when they run zone and you throw this out route into a flat zone? What happens when, you know, you throw a deep streak into a cover four? What happens then? How do you, be, how do you work with that then? How do you handle that? And that's what I'm getting at. You want to have passing patterns that are able to beat zone and man. So what I would do with this play is say, okay, I know drag beats zone. I know that it does. And I know that the a drag streak combo is really effective against zone. So what I do here is now I use that, but they call man, and I know my crossing pattern beats man. And that's how you start working to develop a scheme, something deeper than just a play. And what I want to emphasize more and more as we continue through this process together, what I want to continue to at least emphasize is it doesn't matter what formation it is. It doesn't matter what play it is. It doesn't matter anymore. We have the hot routes. We have all of those things. All that we have to worry about is reads. Can we can we read the defense? Can we can we make the make the necessary reads, progression reads, poss necessary, you know, to really be good? Or are we going to continue to try to force balls into bad coverage? And that's really the bottom line.
as a as someone who has tried to learn every play in the game as someone who has become very burnt out by trying to do that as someone who tries to make the perfect money play the money play that will never be never be stopped as somebody who tries to do all of those things what i continue to see is that it's simply not possible it's not possible to have a play that is unstoppable it's not what is possible is to have a system that is able if you make the correct read with five moving pieces to beat everything a defense can do but you have to make that read and you have to execute and that's the bottom line execution over anything else so with that in mind um, you know I, I you know I, I want to talk mad in purpose so I got so much more I want to say but with that in mind I, you know I leave you to execute I leave you to work on your execution um, we'll talk more about this as the season goes on but it, you know this is gonna change some of the things that I do on my channel I mean we're not gonna be talking necessarily about um, you know the best play any of that anymore I mean we're going to truly take a look at d deeper look into Madden and talk more about execution and more about how to be good at execution. How to actually execute what you what you work in a practice mode. How to transition from practice mode to game mode. The little bitty nuances of the game that no one ever talks about. That's what we're going to talk about on this channel. So, with that in mind, I apologize for not being consistent and not having a video prepared for you guys yesterday I do have videos coming today we will make up for it we will make up for lost time Seam of the week will just simply take a one more day this week and uh, it will be posted but um, you know thank you for your support like I said if you want that defense where we can get pressure with only two people you can check that out um, but again it is what it is it still leaves openings we're still vulnerable and so the game is not not just about pressure. It's not just about having a great play. But it's about how to execute that play in a two-minute drill against a tournament player who has one of the best offenses in the game. That's what this game's about. So with that in mind, wish you guys luck this year. Um, and we'll be talking more about this as the game progresses. I thank you so much for your time today. I know this is a longer video, but I really do. I think there's some value in some of the things that I had to say. So I'm going to go ahead and post it. For those of you that have stayed with me, I really appreciate it. For those of you that are looking to get better at the game, I have products available in the description. Check that out. Um, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. really appreciate all the support you give me. Thanks for bearing with me when I don't.